Chemistry lecture number 84, factors affecting reaction rate. There are several factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction. These factors include the nature of the reactants, concentration, surface area, temperature, and catalysts. Nature of the reactants. Some types of chemical reactions are just faster or slower than others. I'll list some general conditions that predispose a reaction to be fast or slow. These conditions won't guarantee that a reaction will be fast or slow. Uh, they're general trends that occur most of the time, but not all of the time. Gases tend to react faster than solids or liquids. In order for a reaction to occur, particles must be separated from each other and moving with sufficient speed. In the gaseous state, particles are already far apart and moving rapidly. So that's why gases react faster than solids or liquids. Ionic compounds will react faster with each other if they're dissolved in water. In the solid state, ions are tightly bound to each other and are not moving from place to place. Uh, dissolved in water, ionic compounds separate into ions which float freely and collide with each other more easily. So that's why ionic compounds react faster when they're dissolved in water. It's because the ion ions can move. Uh, reactions between ions tend to be faster than reactions between molecules. Uh, reactions between molecules often involve the transfer of electrons and the rearrangement of atoms and bonds from one location to another. And these processes increase the reaction time. On the other hand, reactions between ions simply involve a positive charge being attracted to a negative charge. So that's why uh, ionic reactions are faster. Uh, stronger bonds between atoms increases the reaction time. Uh, for example, single bonds are weaker than double bonds. Uh, a reaction that requires the breaking of single bonds in a molecule will proceed faster than a reaction that requires the breaking of double bonds. A reaction that requires the breaking of many bonds will be slower than a reaction where fewer bonds need to be broken. So consequently, smaller molecules will react faster than larger molecules, since larger molecules have more atoms, uh, which requires more bonds to hold the atoms together. So larger molecules means there are more atoms. If a molecule has more atoms, there are more bonds. Uh, and if there are more bonds, it's going to take longer for that uh, molecule to react. Concentration. Uh, remember that concentration is expressed in moles per liter. It's the number of moles or particles in a container of a certain volume. Now suppose we have hydrogen iodine gas in a closed container. As the gas molecules float around, they collide with each other, and occasionally they'll collide with enough energy to react and form hydrogen iodide. If we add more hydrogen and iodine to the container, we've increased the concentration. At higher concentration, there'll be more collisions between the molecules. If there are more collisions, the reaction will occur more rapidly. Thus, reactions are faster at higher concentrations. The other way to increase concentration is to reduce the volume of the container. And this increases the pressure in the container. And since there's less space in the container, collisions between molecules are more likely to occur, which increases the reaction rate. So let me show you a picture of uh, how concentration increases reaction rate. So here's our chemical reaction between hydrogen and iodine. If we look at the uh, top one here, we have a container that has a hydrogen and iodine molecules, and they're floating around in this space. If we add more molecules, like we have here, there's more hydrogen molecules and more iodine molecules, um, you're more likely to have collisions between them simply because there are more molecules in this container. So if you have more collisions, the reaction occurs uh, faster. Now on the bottom one, um, we have a container filled with hydrogen molecules and iodine molecules. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the size of this container by half. So we're going to cut it in half, and so there's half as much space for these guys to move around in. So since there's half as much space, these molecules are more likely to collide with each other. And the more collisions you have, uh, the faster the reaction goes. So increasing the concentration increases the reaction rate. You can either add more molecules, or you can reduce the volume to increase the concentration. Surface area. If a reaction involves a uh, solid reacting with another substance, uh, the reaction rate can be sped up by increasing the surface area of the solid. One way to increase the surface area of a solid is to break up the solid into smaller pieces. Breaking apart the solid will create more surfaces and thus expose more molecules of the solid to other reactant molecules. 
for example, solid iron reacts with uh, gaseous oxygen to create uh, iron, uh, is it? Yeah, iron 3 oxide. Well, this is rust, basically, Fe2O3. So iron has to react with oxygen to form this species. Now this picture is a, a two-dimensional diagram of oxygen molecules surrounding a solid piece of iron. So oxygen can collide with four surfaces. One, two, three, four. Uh, the iron atoms highlighted in pink are below the surface of the block of iron. So the oxygen molecules are unable to react with these iron atoms. So these oxygen atoms can collide with the iron on the surface, but these guys cannot collide with the pink ones. They're beneath the surface. They can't reach it. These other ones are in the way. Now, if we break uh, the block of iron into four pieces, we increase the surface area of the solid and expose more iron atoms to oxygen. Oxygen can now collide with eight new surfaces, highlighted in green. Uh, the iron atoms highlighted in pink can now react with oxygen. So, before we just had one block, and so if we chop this in half, or break it into four parts, see we separated it into four parts, these surfaces that used to be on the inside are now exposed to the outside. So oxygen can now uh, access more surfaces and the oxygen can now collide with these iron atoms that are highlighted in pink. All right. So since now we have more collisions between iron and oxygen, the uh, reaction will occur more rapidly. So that means that uh, increasing the surface area of the solid increases the reaction rate. All right, so we've increased more surfaces, more opportunities for collisions between the uh, reactants. Temperature. Uh, at higher temperatures, let me move this a bit, a chemical reaction will be faster. Uh, remember that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of atoms or molecules. At higher temperature, uh, a higher temperature means that there are more particles that are moving faster. If atoms and molecules are moving faster, there'll be more collisions, which will increase the reaction rate. In addition, if the particles are moving faster, the collisions between particles will be more powerful. Old bonds are more likely to break, which allows new bonds to form. Thus, at higher temperatures, more particles will have sufficient activation energy for a reaction to occur. The E sub A is a symbol for uh, activation energy. Let's talk about catalysts. Uh, a catalyst is a substance that makes a chemical reaction go faster. A catalyst interacts with the reactants, but is not altered or destroyed in the interaction. After the reaction, the uh, catalyst emerges intact and can once again interact with the reactants to speed the reaction. Catalysts speed the rate of reaction by lowering activation energy. Now here we have a uh, picture of a potential energy diagram of a reaction without a catalyst and with a catalyst. So this is the potential energy of a chemical reaction with, without a catalyst, and this is the same chemical reaction, only it's had a catalyst uh, added to it. Now these graphs both show the same chemical reaction. Uh, the only difference is that with a catalyst, it takes less energy to initiate the reaction and get it started. The activation energy of the catalyzed reaction is less than the activation energy of the uncatalyzed reaction. So, see from here to here, that's the energy needed to get the reaction started without the catalyst. But a catalyst somehow lowers and shrinks the activation energy, so you only need this much energy to get the reaction started if you add a catalyst. So the activation energy with a catalyst is lower. Okay, everything else is the same, though. Let's see. Catalysts lower the activation energy of a reaction by partially or completely breaking the bonds of the reactants. For example, carbon monoxide can be converted into carbon dioxide, but the reaction is very slow. So basically, yeah, these guys collide and produce this, but it's a very slow reaction. Uh, but if uh, carbon monoxide and oxygen are exposed to platinum, uh, the reaction occurs more quickly. So if we put platinum in as a catalyst, uh, the reaction goes a lot faster. 
So platinum makes the reaction faster by breaking the bonds between the oxygen atoms. And the next four pictures show the process of the reaction. All right, so here are four pictures. So, there we go. Okay, so here's our first picture. Um, in the first picture, an oxygen molecule lands on the surface of platinum. So here's our oxygen, and it floats down and lands right here. And this oxygen nestles itself there, and that oxygen nestles itself right here. So the oxygen floats down and lands on the surface. Okay, the oxygen atoms are attracted to the surface of platinum, and a partial bond is formed between the platinum surface and the oxygen atoms. Uh, this bond is strong enough to break the bonds between the oxygen atoms. So basically what's happened is that these oxygens are now separated into individual atoms. Now, if you look at the second picture right here, uh, a carbon monoxide molecule attaches itself to the surface of platinum. So here's carbon monoxide, C out, floats down, and then the C sort of nestles itself in the groove right here. The carbon is attracted to the surface of the platinum right here. All right, now, um, the oxygen atoms right here, I'm gonna move that a little bit, uh, are capable, so these oxygen atoms are capable of moving across the surface of platinum. So this third picture shows an oxygen atom migrating towards the carbon monoxide molecule. So this oxygen can move toward the carbon monoxide molecule. So it makes contact with the molecule, bonds with it, and forms carbon dioxide. So it forms here. And then carbon dioxide is a more stable molecule than carbon monoxide, so it's no longer attracted to the surface of platinum, and it leaves the surface. So the oxygen moves over here, attaches itself to the CO, and it forms CO2, and then it just floats off. So platinum acts as a heterogeneous catalyst in this reaction. Uh, a heterogeneous catalyst is in a different physical state from the reactants. So in the reaction I just showed you, oxygen and carbon monoxide are gases, while platinum is a solid. See, they're both in different uh, physical states. Reactants are gases, platinum is a solid. So it's heterogeneous. A homogeneous catalyst is in the same physical state as the reactants. Uh, for example, sugar uh, can be set on fire and undergo combustion if it's covered with ashes from a burned piece of paper. So you take a sugar cube, oops, and there should be a <laughs> plus sign right here, sorry about that. And in the presence of ashes, if you smear ashes over the sugar, uh, you can light it on fire and the oxygen will combine with the uh, sugar and produce carbon dioxide and water. Uh, it's very difficult to light a sugar cube on fire. Uh, if you hold a flame to a sugar cube, the cube just melts. Uh, but if you cover the cube with ashes before attempting to light it, the cube will catch on fire and produce a pretty blue colored flame. Now, the ashes contain solid metal salts such as sodium carbonate and calcium carbonate, and these compounds act as catalysts to promote combustion. Uh, since the sugar and the carbonates are both solids, the ash acts as a homogeneous catalyst. So sugar and carbonates are both solids. They're both in the same physical state. Um, so that's why they're homogeneous catalysts. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 84, Factors Affecting Reaction Rate.